this video, we're going to talk about the Lorentz force, sometimes called the Lorentz force law. We're going to look at the equation. We're going to, we're going to also look at the units um, to make sure that the units actually do work out the way that they're supposed to. We'll then do an example, and then we'll talk about some of the greater implications of this law. And so the Lorentz force has these two components, the electric force and the magnetic force. The electric force is Q times E, the electric field vector, and the magnetic force is QV cross B, where V is the velocity vector and B is the magnetic field vector. And so lots of vectors here, um, of course, going around, and so it's important to keep all your components correct as you're going through. Um, it's also important to note that the direction of the electric force is going to be in the direction of the field. So the electric force acts in the same direction as the electric field E for positive charges and the opposite direction for negative charges. We'll also note that the magnetic force is going to be, because it's a cross product, it's going to be perpendicular to the direction of motion, so velocity, and it's also going to be perpendicular to the magnetic field. We're going to use the right hand rule to get the correct direction in practice, but uh, we'll leave that for another time. Um, we're not gonna look at the right-hand rule today. And so essentially, as I said, we're gonna start off by proving the units. So let's do F, I get a different color here. Uh, let's start with the um, electric field force, or sorry, the electric force Q times E. So F is equal to QE. What are the units of Q? Well, those are in Coulombs. And what are the units of E? Well, E is usually measured in volts per meter, so let's start there. And that does not look like Newton's, but of course it will be, we just have to plug in some more things. So what is a Coulomb? Well, it's amps per second. And what are volts? Well, and keep in mind we still have the 1 over meters in the denominator. Let me actually put that here first. And then what is a volt? Well, 1 volt is a kilogram meter squared this one's pretty pretty weird. So kilogram meters per squared per seconds cubed times amps. So a very strange derived unit. Now let's see what cancels. Well, we got meters canceling in the denominator there with one of the powers in the numerator. We have amps canceling over here. And now let's use a different color for this one. We got seconds going down to the squared in the denominator. And we are left with kilograms times meters per second squared. And of course, these brackets are just showing that I'm using units, that I'm doing a, a little unit analysis or dimensional analysis. And of course, that is in units of Newtons, um, kilogram meters per square, uh, kilogram meters per second squared, something that we know very well. So those are units of Newtons. And so it does work out for that. And now let's go on to the next one. So for F is equal to uh, Q times V cross B, what are those units? Well, of course, that is going to be Q is still in um, Coulombs, um, so we can do amps per second there. We'll just go ahead and save ourselves uh, save ourselves a step. As we saw up here, it's amps, per, amps times seconds, sorry. And then V is going to be in meters per second, and then B is going to be in units of Teslas. And so that is equal to, well, those seconds are going to cancel. So that is equal to amps times meters. And what's a Tesla? Well, a Tesla is another derived unit. So you just have to know what a Tesla is. And a Tesla is a kilogram per second squared times amps in the denominator. And so what cancels? Well, uh, the amps are going to cancel there. And you get units of kilograms times meters per second squared, which is, of course, units of Newtons as before. And so the reason I did this dimensional analysis is in the example that we're about to do, I am not going to do any units for anything, but we're just going to say that everything is in these proper SI units. If, uh, if we're plugging in a charge, it's going to be in units of Coulombs. If we're plugging in an electric field, it's going to be in volts per meter. If we're plugging in a magnetic field, it's going to be in units of Teslas. If we're plugging in velocity, it's going to be in meters per second. So we're using already these proper units for this example. And so let me go ahead and write something out here. So um, we'll start with our equation. F is equal to Q times that quantity 
of uh, E plus V cross B. What are we gonna do first? We're gonna have to do this cross product first. And cross products are actually not bad at all. Um, cross products are really simple once you get the hang of them. And so V cross B, well, we're gonna have to get some, some numbers here. So um, let's go ahead and say that the charge Q is equal to two. Um, again, we're saying coulombs, but I'm not gonna write units for anything. So everything is in proper SI units. E is gonna be two I plus 12J uh, minus 5K. And then V is equal to, um, let's see here, 2I plus 4J, and we're not gonna have any K component. And then B is equal to no I component, but we're gonna have five as the J component, and then let's do six as the K component. Okay, let me move this down, need a little bit more room, we'll get to that in a second. So these are all the things that we need, these are all our numbers. So I'm gonna put them in that corner. And let's start with V cross B. So V cross B is, this is the way I'm gonna set it up. I'm gonna set it up as a, as a three by three determinant. And we're gonna have I, J, K. These are always going to go on the top row, I, J, K. Those are our unit vectors. V cross B. So V, what components are those? V corresponds to the middle row. So we're gonna do two, four, zero. Don't forget that zero for the K component. B uh, has zero in the I component, five, and then six. And close that determinant. And so the way you, that you do this is you say, okay, let's start with the I component here. And so when you do the I component, block out this row in your mind, or column, block, block out that row, and do this one minus this one. So four times six minus five times zero. Four times six is 24 minus five times zero is zero, and that's it. And then what you're gonna do is you're always gonna subtract the J component, if you do it my way anyway. So you'll subtract the J component, block out that J column, block out that J row, and do the same thing. So you do two times six now, 12 minus zero. Two times six minus, uh, minus zero times zero, and that's your J component but of course it's negative because we have that negative out front. Then we do plus K. So for plus K, we are going to block out that column, block out that row, and you're gonna do five times two minus four times zero. It's 10 minus zero. And that's your V cross B. So that is equal to 24 I minus 12 J plus 10 K. Now we need to add that to E. So if we have E already up here, and didn't really copy that great, I'll try that again. So let me copy that. So V cross B is there, E is here, and we just need to add them. Well, that's gonna be um, E plus V cross B then is going to be 26I plus zero J plus five K. So now we've done E plus V cross B, this whole inside the parentheses portion. Now we just need to multiply by Q. Q was two coulombs. So multiply by Q and you get that the force then is equal to 52, um, 52 I plus zero J plus 10 K. And as a final note, we're gonna put this in parentheses and we're gonna uh, just place our little unit there at the end. Obviously, as we said, we're working in SI units for this problem, for this little example. So we know that the answer is gonna come out to Newtons as we already proved up here when we did this dimensional analysis. And so that's our force. Now, that's the end of the example. And of course, now let's talk about this whole Lorentz force and special relativity thing that's been kind of intimidating below our, our example. Um, what does this have to say? Well. Essentially, it says that the, the Lorentz force law still applies when we have special relativity. Um, the only th thing that we have to consider here is that with special relativity, we're, we're always dealing with changing our reference frames. And velocity is something that depends on your reference frame. You know, for example, if you're in a car driving down the road and you're inside that car, you might say that in your reference frame, you have a velocity of zero miles per hour. 
but somebody on the road might say that you're driving at 45 miles per hour. And so these different reference frames, um, essentially what they're going to do is it, they will change the components of the magnetic and electric field vectors. They'll change the components of your velocity vector, but in the end, you, you will see that the motion is, of course, still the same. And this is essentially what Einstein um, was saying with his whole theory of special relativity, is that these different frames, um, physics is still going to work in these different frames. Physics is not going to break just because you're in a different reference frame. And so we'll leave that there for now, but that's the gist of this section. And it's just a little bit of uh, something to think about when you're solving these problems, that there is a little bit more nuance involved. Um, it's not so simple, but uh, you know, when we start changing reference frames, but for now, um, we can just stick to one reference frame and we'll be, we'll be set for the time being. Thank you.